cry over the men of the past. We didn't know what to make of it first. We were, we were bewildered. Then to searching and looking for truth and light. We were reminded of a prophecy in the Hebrew text where the Magi says, Balaam, a star will come from Jacob, a ruler will rise from Israel. We looked at each other, we all agreed. We needed to find for ourselves what the meaning of the star was. We felt compelled to follow the sun. We didn't know all the details or reasons, so we had to figure out the future. How it all will play out. But one thing was clear, my friends. A sign had been given. We have seen it. And now we needed to decide were we going to follow the star? Right then and there, the journey of my life began. Deep within my heart, somehow within the recesses of my soul, I longed to find the meaning of it all, just like you, my friend. And in this sign, this star, it seemed to be the clearest sign from God above that there was a plan to this all. It almost sounded like nothing was left to chance. But in history and our everyday life, God was working out His master. Imagine that. To be able to see such prints. To be known by Him and to know Him still. I long to be in the presence of such a rising King. One thing that we notice was even stranger than the star itself. And that was that when we got to the city, when we came to Jerusalem, the star disappeared right above the temple. We were confused. We inquired about the newborn king. We talked to everyone we could. But nobody seemed to be expecting him. Nobody knew. Or nobody was looking for the child who was promised so long ago, and we have seen the star far beyond. The rulers and the authorities of the city seemed surprised. King Herod was troubled, and the city with him, of course. But the people, I remember the people. When they came, the priests, the scribes and the rulers and everyone that came, it was obvious they weren't looking for the times to be fulfilled or the light of God to be revealed. Their eyes were not open. Their hearts were not in tune, searching for the sign of God at noon. Thus they missed the signs that we have seen. And they didn't know a, a king will be born on that night. I realized my friends and I, as we came into town, we were strangers. We noticed the looks, you know, when someone new comes into town. We noticed their attitude. When they came together and they and as they reviewed the ancient texts, they pointed to us to Bethlehem and to Judea, almost with a mocking face. 
what to do, my friends and I, and I thought, we're, to be honest, a little confused. How can it be that we have seen something that all of them have missed? Could it be that we, not being from their town, not being one of them, would see a sign that God would show to those who willingly open hearts and mind to see His love. We have seen it. And for a moment, we hesitated. We asked, were we wrong? Was there something that we didn't know that they knew because they were the people of God had chosen? But just in the nick of time, as our dreams and hopes were fading to confusion and doubt and even unbelief, the sign of God came back to us and the star appeared again and we saw the love. The star appeared. A search had not been in vain. We screamed. We were not alone. Divine providence had stayed the course and as we listened, we found within our hearts the courage to believe the voice of God within our soul that called us to follow the sign we've seen. Follow the sign that had been given. And to keep our hearts in tune and open to the life that God will show. That He will show. See, friends, such is life. When all is dark and your heart in pain, maybe in confusion, doubt, and maybe in your faith, just know, friends, at that moment, we're not alone. Divine providence will stay the course. And as you listen, you'll find within your heart the courage to believe the voice of God within your soul that calls you to follow. Keep your heart in tune and open to the lie your hope will prove. As we saw the star that stood still above the place, we came to the stable where the young child was. To be honest, we were surprised. The stable. Not a palace, not a glorious room, not a place where you may expect to see a king. But you know, such as God. Most times when we are not looking, when you're not expecting, or from the places and from the people that you think no light will come, then the sign of God will show, and you will know Him, and you will see His greater love. Amen. My heart and my friends, we were filled with unspeakable joy. It was incredible. There we were and there he was during our journey at times. There were moments that seemed too far beyond the stars. But now our joy was complete. Our hearts overflowed with the realization that in just a moment as we enter that room, we will see him. We will see the king. Alas. No more waiting. No more trying. No more dreaming. Oh, or faith unseen. We were there. We were in. As we walked into the place, the sight was simple, yet profound. A child or a king, a baby, ruler, the son of, of God and the son of men, both fully, he was. 
as my eyes rested on the child divine, as we saw him, we worship, I worship. With my heart and soul, I felt my wandering heart finally found its home. No need for searching, no need for seeking, for in His presence, my heart seemed to be fleeing to a realm of beauty unknown to me and any human. Then, as we worship, we offer gifts. But the gifts were only symbols of what our hearts were feeling. We felt blessed, we felt relieved, for alas, the King we have seen. Oh, what a joy, oh, what a peace, as we gave ourselves to Christ in the world. Then as we worship, my gift meant that I surrender for Him to be. It meant that my life was His. That my riches, my success, my gains, anything I, I was and anything I, I had was of Him and of Him alone. And in His presence, I face down. As I worship, I still recognize that all of me, my mind, my body, my soul, and my will belong to Him, to Christ the King, the God, the man, the human, Son, and King. At that moment of truth, we worship. We know we surrender our hearts. We felt compelled to share the blessing. At that moment as we surrendered, we knew that we couldn't just stay there. That what we have cared and the journey we've taken was now starting a new journey for us. That this was just the beginning. That we have been blessed to see the promise come to pass and that we have been touched and that our lives was such that I, now we must go to find our own to share the love that we have sought. For in this world, amidst your own, listen friends, the wandering hearts are seeking life. The search for hope. They search for love, and in this child that we have seen, there is a promise to be fulfilled. If we just share the vision there, then faith will grow, and love sublime will bring joy, hope will follow, and all will see the child that came to share love, joy, and peace. And that's the worship. We felt the love. We felt the miracle of God's grace being full. You see, I want to leave you today with one main message as you go through the season's blessings. Listen to me now, if you haven't listened yet. The baby came. Amen. We have seen the sign. We have gone to meet the Son divine. But know, my friend, that in your life, the work of Christmas has just begun. And so, Howard Thurman says, the work of Christmas begins. 